Hi guys, welcome to episode 42 for the 29th of May. Uh, remember to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment or remote for engagement. Follow my socials, X and TikTok, at Technofish Live. And if you want to discuss this or any of my other videos, please swing back my live streams from around 10 o'clock p.m. here on YouTube Gaming. Right, let's get into the news and the personal update to start with. Right, guys, um, just a quick update. As I said, we've... We've managed to hit partner, so I'm eternally grateful to all of you for the support. It has meant a lot in doing so. Uh, there's a lot of work gone into it, and I, I am grateful to all of you for what what we've achieved, basically. Um, on that note, just a quick update. If you do become a member, you will get access to all of my videos a day early. Um, that would be my ghost videos and the news and maybe a few others there will be exclusive episodes going out specifically for members only um so there will be other benefits as well as other features to go in towards me live streams and things like that so uh just a quick thank you really um again i do appreciate all the support any money that is raised from memberships and super thanks and things like that will go directly back into the stream um, to try and upgrade the quality of the videos and sort of get new games to play and feature and things like that. Um, so we'll be grateful for that. Thank you very much. Let's get straight into the news. Uh, the first part of news is the original OG console war is finally over. After 45 years, Atari have bought out in television. It's a bit of a random move. I'm not sure why. I mean, obviously, Atari aren't the same company they used to be back then. They've been bought out many times since. But um, they have bought out the biggest competitor that they had during the 70s and 80s in Intellivision. They now own all the properties and all the game licenses and the Intellivision brand. What they plan on doing with it, I'm not entirely sure. I think they are trying to preserve the games to some extent whether they'll be re-released digitally or made available to play on other platforms or whatever i'm not entirely sure but most of the games will probably be able to run on run on a calculator now um but it's it sort of sparked me interest a little bit i'm a bit curious as to why they've done it but um like i said if, if it's all about game preservation then fair enough fair play to them similarly it looks like IGN have bought out the majority of their competition too. Um, they've made an acquisition of Gamer Network, who have a lot of media outlets, including Eurogamer and VG247, as well as outside Xbox and Digital Foundry and a few other things all fall under their umbrella now. Um, I did used to visit Eurogamer's site a lot and back in the day and things, but um, will this spell the end of gaming journalism as we know it i'm not entirely sure because i know a lot of people now tend to rely on streamers and content creators opinions more than press um but with this potential monopolization of the media section will it cause issues for the gaming industry I'm not entirely sure I'm worth keeping an eye on though i just thought i'd bring it up as it did sort of grab me attention speaking of Eurogamer, i used to go to the euro game of shows um in birmingham and stuff a while ago and it looks like we're heading into expo sort of territory over the next few weeks there's going to be a lot of gaming news coming out um the xbox showcase is in a week or two i think it's the ninth or so so probably another week or two so there will be a lot of leaks and stuff one of the leaks that's come out recently is that a new game um from doom will feature in the xbox showcase supposedly rumored to be in a medieval setting however that works with the guns and stuff uh doom dark ages is expected to be the title and uh, they reckon it's going to be showcased quite heavily no other real details are given other than the title be interesting to see what comes of that black ops 6 leaked uh well leaked whether they leaked it or not i don't know but um they released a sort of teaser trailer Obviously, that's on its way out. I'm assuming it'll be out around November. It normally comes out around my birthday, so it'll be around then, I'm guessing. Um, from the video, it seems to sort of allude to sort of Gulf War type era. Um, 
be interesting to see exactly how that plays out. But there were rumours of like dodgy storylines, including nine eleven and stuff like that. Whether they'll, I know they are quite. I don't know. The they do push boundaries, but whether they'll go that far, not entirely sure. But it'll be interesting to see what comes of that. Another game that's sort of getting heavily leaked at the minute is a game called Deadlock from Valve. It looks very much in the vein of Team Fortress cross sort of Overwatchy type game. Um, it's going to be an arena shooter. I think it's somebody said it was six v six. Um, obviously hero based. Everybody's got different abilities and stuff like that. Like I say, it sort of looks a bit more like an up-to-date Team Fortress, but I've got a feeling it's probably going to be a bit too late on the scene now, this. Um, what with Marvel releasing their Rivals game and things like that. Um, what do you guys think? Have they left it too late? or Have you got any interest in it? Or is this the first you've heard? Like I said, there will be a lot more leaks and stuff coming via the showcases and expos over the next few weeks so it'll be interesting to see what comes of that the gift that keeps on giving escape from Tarkov so obviously they released the special edition where if you pay, when it first launched if you paid $100 you were supposed to get all future DLC and then a few weeks back um, they released another edition for $250 which included gameplay that you didn't get it wasn't classed as DLC it was a new game mode or something, I don't know how they worked it out, but um, there was a big hoo-ha about it all a few weeks back. Um, in a way, sort of rectifying that, they offered people who had bought the original edition an upgrade for $100 to get the newer version, so you could play all these extra features and stuff, and some people actually paid it for whatever reason. Um, but as a way of sort of rectifying that, they've offered them compensation in the way of a $50 voucher, which has to be spent in-game, in-store, and you get no change, so you have to pretty much use the $50 in one transaction, or you lose whatever spare you have left over. So it's a bit of a give-and-take kind of situation. Um, we'll give you the money back, but you'll have to spend it back with us, sort of thing. So it's a, it's a bit bullshit. Like With the new games coming out, I mean, obviously there's Arena Breakout and that grey zone and stuff, I'm wondering if Tarkov will still hold the appeal. I know it's the original and it's probably brought a lot of ground in the way it's been produced and things, but I don't know. With I think Arena Breakout is going to be a, a free-to-play game from what I gather. Um, I've actually got access to the beta. I haven't tried it yet, so I might have to give that a look. But I'm sure when it's coming out, that's going to be free-to-play. Um, I'm just hoping they don't go the route of sort of making it pay to win with weaponry and stuff, buying like skin packs or loot boxes or whatever like that. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on that and see how that pans out. But in the meantime, it does look like a better option, to be honest, but we'll see what happens. And... Lastly, uh, I'll just touch on the Valorant situation. Uh, obviously, we are in the middle of the VCT. We're just about to hit the knockout phase at the minute. Uh, we're down to the last eight. Some interesting games, to be honest. Um, Paper X are going to take on G2. Um, that could be a good game. Edward Gamer and have Heretics. Heretics have been pretty damn hot in the last few games. So I'm, I'm assuming Edward Gamer are going to have a... A battle on the hands there, but we'll see what happens with that one. 100 Thieves have drawn foot. That should be a cracking game, as should Fnatic against Gen.G. Um, some good teams up against each other. Hoping to see some impressive gameplay, and hopefully they'll sort of... There won't be any whitewashes, and everybody will put up a good fight, but it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Again, I think that's due to finish in the next couple of weeks, so we're just hitting the first stage of the knockouts now. So we'll keep an eye on that and see how things go from there. But yeah, that's pretty much the news for now. Um, again, I just want to say a big thank you and how grateful I am to all of you. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel. As I said, if you do become a member, you will get early access to the videos, so you'll get most of them a day early and you will get 
uh, special members only edition of Techno Get Scared. Um, I am thinking of doing longer form ones as well, where I actually react to full investigation videos, which can be on a bit longer. I tend to go for around the 15, 20 minute mark videos at the minute, but some of the longer ones, the investigations can go from anywhere up to 30 to an hour. Um, so I'm sort of toying with the idea of doing those. I will be doing some reactions live on stream as well at some point and i'm hoping to get some creepy games to play as well just to try and keep the horror vibe going in the live streams as well as the videos because they do seem to pull quite a, a crowd those videos and it'd be nice to sort of bring some of the guys into the streams from there but yeah um in the meantime thank you very much for watching uh take care and I shall catch you in the live streams. Come by for a chat. See you then. Cheers.